Hello and welcome back, Eddie Radosovich. George Stoya here. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday night. Thank you, George. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Just past 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. Here we are. Just got done talking with uh, Oklahoma. Some of some of the players, four players tonight. What a joyous occasion this was. And let me be honest with you. It's late on a Saturday night. I don't know if I mentioned that at the top. Maybe one of the latest post-practice availabilities in the history of Oklahoma football. But we can say that we were there tonight. Yeah, it was... Um... It was it was good. It was good to talk to Jake Roberts. Did we mention that it was a late night on a Saturday? Did we mention that? I, I just wanted to get that up front. Yeah, it's uh it's very late um on Saturday. Uh I don't remember ever having a media availability on a Saturday, especially well, on, on a Saturday night. But, Unprecedented. Yeah, but uh um, needed. Yeah, it was you know, it was good to talk to Jake Roberts, um, especially because, you know, we haven't talked to him and Fabecchi, Wee Woo, um, you know, two transfers that um, I think are going to make a big impact this year. Getting to talk to them was was good, and then PJ Adabarwe and, and Kip Lewis on defense. And it was a, it was a Saturday night, yes, that we did this. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to get that out in front. Oklahoma did scrimmage on Friday afternoon. That was uh, kind of a known. We had talked about that last week on yep. the uh, the YouTube show right here. And as far as that went, let's go there first. Just talking about the scrimmage, pretty defensive heavy on Friday afternoon, and it kind of goes with uh, you know I think what has been. Kind of the track record here of the first week and a half of preseason camp. Yeah, the defense dominated. Um, I know that you and I both talked to some people that, um, you know, were either at the scrimmage or, or heard about the scrimmage. Um, and it sounds like the defense really, um, you know, definitely had the edge. Sure. Uh, you know, I know that we reported some things on on the Crimson Corner, which you can go check out. Um, you know, if you subscribe to Soonerscoop.com. But I think Jackson Arnold had a tough day. I think that's definitely something we can say. Um, you know, he, he turned the ball over a couple times, which really hasn't been an issue throughout fall camp. And, you know, look, those things are going to happen, um, you know, especially when you play a defense as good as Oklahoma's. And, you know, I, I think that the defense definitely is a unit that when you look at the experience on that side of the ball, the talent, how long they've been in the system, they should have the upper hand, sure. right, uh, in these situations. And so I don't think it's anything to be too concerned with. I know a lot of guys were held out of it, too. You know, Nick Anderson, Jalil Farouk, uh, and Andrell Anthony, um, you know, obviously Jaden Gibson is hurt. So you had, you know, uh, you know, four wide receivers right there that I listed that would probably typically be starters for Oklahoma right. not playing in the scrimmage. I even heard that Deion Burks was very limited in it, not because he's hurt, but because they literally cannot lose any more wide receivers at that spot. And so, and you know what you have in Dion Burke. So you don't, you don't need him to go out there and, and show out in the, in the scrimmage. So um, I think the offense was a little bit limited, but uh, overall it sounded like it went really well. I think the defense played great. Sounds like Zach Schmidt um, did really well in field goal kicking. Interesting. So considering, uh, you know, what we had heard and what Brandon Vanderbilt yeah. had disclosed at the coaches luncheon, that maybe Tyler Keltner was the guy with the odds on favorite. Maybe that was uh, more of a, Wake up a little bit, Zach. Uh, yeah. You know, we're kind of counting on And we've heard we've heard Zach be really good in practice before. I don't sure. think that's anybody's concern. So I'd still like to see it in a game, but that's certainly good news. You'd rather have him making him in practice uh, than not making yeah, them at all. Yeah, you know. thinking, oh, we needed to go back to the portal to get another guy, right? Exactly. So, and then, you know, Javante Barnes was another name that uh, I had heard had a pretty good, um, you know, scrimmage. Uh, you know, Danny Stutzman, um, I believe, had a pick six in the game. Um, you know, I, I think that... Um, there are several guys that, from red that really zone stood to uh, end zone. It sounds like too. Yes. Yeah. Which is, so you know, pretty damn good play if he's going all the way. Yeah. So I I think that uh, look you can you can find it on on soonerscoop.com. Um, I'm hoping to get some more details here sure. over the next day or so. But we get to talk to Brent on Tuesday. It tentatively. That's what I mean. We'll we'll see what the media schedule actually looks like this next week. But hopefully it, we'll get to talk to him. Clear up some. There's some injury question marks I think going on. Uh, from the scrimmage as well. So hopefully we'll, we'll get some answers from Brent on that. It seems like the only long-term situation, though, for now, is Jaden Gibson. Correct. Yeah, that's the only one. Um, you know, I think there was a couple guys that got nicked up in the scrimmage that I think everybody was a little bit fearful of, um, but it I doesn't sound like they're super serious as of right now. So, again, we'll wait till Brent Venables tells us, but Jaden Gibson's the only one that, uh, that we know of right now that is – seeming like a long-term um, situation. No doubt. All right, let's get into a little bit of the uh, video from Saturday night, late night Saturday night in Norman. I think that usually when we're, we're down Pretty here dark this out. late at night, 
it's a situation that you're headed over to Baby Sugars. You're headed over to 747 back in the day, but not tonight. We headed over to the practice field to talk to, uh, you know, Jake Roberts, as you said, Fabici, uh, Kip Lewis, as well as PJ Edabore. And here they are talking about, you know, kind of their thoughts on Oklahoma's first big scrimmage of the preseason. It was good. Uh, guys flying around, both sides making plays. Uh, I feel like there was a, it was a good starting point and a lot to, to grow from. So uh, just look at the film, see where we can get better, and then apply it for the next time we're out there. Where, where do you think this offense can get better right now if you – couple weeks into practice now uh probably just you know the basics coach v talks about the basics a lot uh you know keep it simple don't keep the main thing the main thing and uh we're just focused on doing the little things right so you know just communication our process alignment assignment technique um just doing the little things right so i, I think we just got to keep improving there and then that'll help us uh to build upon that and you know to make big plays my first game it was fun you know to get out there getting like a game atmosphere you know, have bullets flying everywhere and, and really be able to, to play full speed without any coaches kind of like right on you. Uh, it was a really good experience. How would you kind of assess how you guys did as an offensive uh, line in that first opportunity? You know, there's always things to improve on. It's never going to be good enough, but I think that we're going in the right direction and we have a bright future ahead of us. Uh, it went pretty good. I mean, first day, so I mean, going to have mistakes, but it went pretty good. But both sides of the ball, uh, offense did really well, defense did really well. Everybody flying around to the ball, you know, uh, giving max effort. So you know, that's always good to see. I think I did good. You know, definitely things to improve on, but that's what fall camp's about. Just got to keep stacking days on days. Who on this defense is somebody that we're not talking about? Most people aren't talking about, but you think is going to really make an impact? Probably our Mason Thomas. I think I think he's one to definitely be on the watch list because he's going to have a season. Certainly somebody in our Mason Thomas that, uh, you know, I think we've talked about a little bit just in terms of being able to see him out at practice and that limited viewing that we did yep. on Monday. But he is a guy that played in nine games a year ago. He missed four for the injury. Just never really seemed to get his feet underneath him, quite literally, with both ankles having, yep. the, uh, having the problems throughout the year. But definitely somebody going into this year that you would expect as you move into, uh, you know, what is now his third year in Norman, that this is kind of his time, his moment at the defensive end position. Yeah, he's got a lot of twitch, a guy that I think everybody thinks can be an elite pass rusher. I think that that's where he really excels. I think he's good in the run game, but somebody that on third down you really want coming off the edge. And I would throw P.J. in that mix too. I think P.J. entering now his second season, everybody's expecting a big leap for him. So um, it was good to hear from P.J. And obviously P.J. talking about R. Mason Thomas. That defensive end group is an interesting group because right. – I think you have a lot of solid players, but can you do you have a difference maker? Do you have somebody that can really get after the quarterback, get a lot of sacks this year, and kind of make that you know those di those difference makers, um, you know, in big in tight games? And I think that you know PJ and R. Mason Thomas are the two that I kind of have circled as okay, can they be guys that can get a strip sack in a big moment, or you know, um, th you know, make plays on the edge that you know, because of their athleticism, maybe they, they don't read the play exactly right, but they make up for it in their athleticism. Like, sure. I think those two guys, I, I think, are super interesting cases because they have the athleticism uh, to be super talented. We'll get more with PJ here in a second. Let's hop back into uh, the offensive side of the ball. We did talk to Jake Roberts tonight for the first time in Fubichi, uh, Wu Wei Wu, who, you know, I think have kind of an interesting connection to Seth Luttrell, obviously, yeah, having played North at Texas. North Texas. Uh, I guess their time together at North Texas was a little bit different, just in that, obviously, Jake is coming in from Waco after playing a year at uh, Baylor. But they do have a, I guess, a little bit of an understanding of what Seth Luttrell is asking them to do on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear from both of them kind of what kind of offense they're going to run. I mean, Jake Roberts kind of told me that it's very similar to what they were running sure. in North Texas. So that's good to know kind of what, what it's going to look like. But I think for both of them, you know, there are two guys that are going to step into very important roles. I mean, Fabecci has essentially already won that right guard spot. Um, and I think a large part of that is he knows what they're – one, he's, he's a good football player, but – he knows what Seth Luttrell wants in his offensive line. He understands the plays already. So he kind of has an upper hand, even on guys that have maybe been in the program a little bit longer. Same with Jake Roberts. I mean, he missed the spring, right? But he's still probably going to be OU starting tight end along with Bauer Sharp. I think they're going to split time. But he's been able to have an upper hand because he knows exactly what Seth Luttrell wants. Obviously, he was in Seth Luttrell's system for three years. Uh, and when Seth was fired, that's what kind of caused him to jump into the portal, end up at Baylor last year. So, and I think it's a it's a large part of why he's at Oklahoma, not just because he wanted to come play for his you know hometown team right. and all that, but 
I think Seth Luttrell really helped with that. No doubt. Here is a little bit more from Jake Roberts as well as Fabechi Wewu talking about, you know, kind of getting acquainted to everything in Norman, the newness that comes with uh, kind of being the new guy around the block, even though that they do have the relationship with Seth Luttrell. Real laid back. Uh, if you guys have been around him, you know, a man of few words, he's not going to say a ton, but uh, his words are meaningful and uh, he's a real personable guy. So uh, our relationship was really strong at UNT and that's carried over to being back home. Is it a pretty similar offense to what you guys were running? or? Yeah, some of the same stuff, uh, similar concepts, a lot of different verbiage, um, you know, some similar stuff, some different stuff, but um, yeah, it's all good. Uh, you know, there's a lot of differences and there's a lot of similarities, you know. Um, I feel like over here, you know, there's a lot of high class guys, you know, it's a very intense over here. Um, I feel like Seth is still, he still got that fire in him. Mm -hmm. you know, he's still bringing the energy to practice, he's still bringing, you know, the physicality. And that's what I really like about it. That coaching style, nothing's changed from what you remember? Uh, I mean, no, I mean, I, I feel like they kind of run. They, he runs similarly to where to whenever he was at UNT. Uh, yeah, I think he runs similarly to where he was at UNT. What's, the what, what's it like working with a quarterback like Jackson? It's great. Uh, it, he's a dude. I mean, he can he can sling it for sure, and uh, it's been great working with him. I feel, he, you know, being a younger guy too, I feel like I'm able to help him uh, with some of the experience side of things playing a lot of football. I mean, he's got the talent, obviously, and I just try to help him out where I can. Uh, but he's great. It's been great working with him. Jake, what is the tight end's role in this offense? What is that balance between blocking? And yeah, I think I think our role, I think we do a lot of, I think our role is just to be uh, a versatile group, someone that can do everything. The tight end in this offense, you're going to be asked to block. You're going to be asked to uh, run routes and get out in the pass game. And then uh, you're also going to be asked to pass protect. So I think um, the strength is the ability to do a lot of things at a high level. So I think you can expect us to do a lot of that this year. Of course, of course. You know, we want uh, all of our quarterbacks to feel, you know, like they have all the time in the world, especially Jackson. Um, you know, we want him to be be back there and be able to sit the ball down and take a drink if he has to. Like we want him to uh, have all of his options available. You know, whoever he wants to throw to, you know, just give him enough time to. to punch it in there. I mean, offensive line is important to build chemistry, but yet you're a group that's learning each other. Is there a sense of urgency of how important it is to grow and develop fast? Of course. I mean, there's urgency everywhere. You know, it's always urgent to make sure that you feel connected with your brothers, but I don't want to, but it doesn't feel pressured, if that makes sense. Like, we're not pressured to hang out. We want to hang out with each other. We want to get better with each other. The urgency comes from mo mo uh, mostly all of us wanting to be better for each other. That's where the urgency comes from. Okay, McIntyre, another name that uh, you know Jake Roberts had yeah. mentioned, and maybe some of it had been lost in the mix a little bit, just in terms of uh, the overall rotation of what that tight end unit's going to be. But it was good to hear, you know, kind of how they're going to be used, what what the idea is with the tight end position moving into this year. Well, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to be used a lot differently than what it was a year ago, and and I don't think that's because again Jeff Lebby didn't want to use the tight end; they just didn't have anybody. Right, and uh, you know Austin Stogner played. I think 95% of those snaps and he just doesn't have the athleticism that maybe a Jake Roberts or a Bauer Sharp or a Cade McIntyre does. And, and even, you know, Caden Helms and Devon Mitchell maybe get into, into that mix as well. So I think they're going to use the tight end position a lot. I think it's going to look a lot more than, you know, like, like what it did in 20, 2022 with uh, Brayden Willis. So, um, you know, good to hear from, from Jake talk about that. And then Fabecci too, I think talking about, um, you know, protecting Jackson Arnold. I, I think that that's obviously a huge thing. You want to protect the quarterback, but that's been, you know, I think back in the spring, we heard a lot of, they didn't have time to get, you know, passes off and things like that. It seems like that's changed quite a bit. So I think Fabecci's maybe taken on a little bit of a leadership role, especially somebody that has pretty much, again, solidified his starting spot. Seems like he is going to be a massive addition to that yeah. offensive line. And He's also think, a massive human. Yeah, we, we talked about that a little bit, you know, back during the spring when he got here and yeah. just how big of a difference that guy's going to be and being able to lock down that right guard spot, it seems like a pretty positive thing for Oklahoma's offensive line. Here yep. moving forward. So. And he's like 339 pounds, which is just a huge human. And, you know, I, I will say, like, just – Seeing the video and then like just kind of somewhat standing next to him. I, I know Bob shot the video that is in the scrum there, but yeah. he doesn't look like it. No, like it, it doesn't look like I it. think it's he moves well at that weight. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
All right, let's talk about P.J. Adebore. Obviously, there's a lot of expectations that come when you're a former five-star type of guy. Uh, Had six tackles a year ago, three tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. You would imagine that production is going to be, uh, you know, almost naturally much more going into the sophomore season. Yeah, we've seen flashes of P.J. be really good. And I, I think last year they tried to throw him into the fire a little bit in certain situations. This year, he's going to be in the rotation. Like right. he, like I, I don't know if he'll start a game this year. It wouldn't surprise me if he did, but he's certainly going to get a lot more snaps this season. Uh, and I think that he's progressed really well. I mean, we heard it in the spring, especially late in the spring, that he was really starting to come on. We've heard it a little bit in fall camp that he's made some nice plays. He's definitely grown a lot. I think he's, what, up to 260, which you'll hear yeah. him kind of talking about his progress from over the offseason. So obviously a large human, very athletic. Um, I think for him he's just still somewhat of a raw talent so it's like we just got to get him snaps we got to get him out there let him play some football especially early in the season I could see them you know saying hey we're we're just going to play you a lot uh, to start the year and kind of see how it goes because I think once he gets those reps he's just going to become a much much better player here is PJ kind of talking about his big offseason gaining all the weight and everything that went into it as well as uh, you know just a natural uh, more comfortable yeah going into this second season in Norman so just just knowledge of the, of the game. Obviously, the more you're around it, the, the more knowledgeable you're going to become naturally. And I think um, I might work hard in the weight room and, and just eating to, to just put more weight on so I can just hang around more uh, uh, with the bigger guys. How much more comfortable in the system do you feel at this point now compared to last year? It's night and day. Um, just just a better understanding. It's less thinking and just more, more reacting for, for me. Where have you noticed that gaining all that weight has helped you the most? Um, just uh, whenever, I, maybe whenever I like to strike an alignment, uh, you know, maybe they just get pushed back further. And I'll and I just notice that, oh, my weight really impacts. And I can just tell by the way I strike and the movement I get up front. A lot of lessons, you know, some, uh, a guy like Coach Shave, you know, one thing about him, you know, he's, he's all about football, but he's going to pour life into you any single time or any single, day, any single uh, time he can. Which is one thing, I, which is probably the number one thing I like about him, um, just because it's not all about football all the time. It's about life, and football is also a part of it since that's what we're doing. But you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna just grow you in all aspects of your life. What has Dominic Williams provided to that front four for you guys since he got here? Oh, physicality, big, strong, smart, can move. He's the whole package what you want to hear when you're talking about Dominic Williams yeah. uh, there in the middle and you saw him and PJ kind of going up against each other or going with each other side by side at that yeah. po- at the uh, the open practice that we had on Monday but you know I think that the story for me just in terms of like the first week and a half of spring of uh, uh, preseason practice it's been this defense and yeah. I think that you're starting to kind of think or at least I am in the back of my mind it's like how good can this group be? How, how, how much further along is this thing in year number three under Brent? And now, obviously, Zach Alley, who you know we still haven't met. Tonight would have been a perfect night. We could have done it at 1130. That would have been great. But it was gonna, it's going to be interesting to see, like, how good can this thing be? Like, I'm, I, I don't think it's going to be, like, a top five defense or a top ten defense. I'm not there yet, but I think they could be pretty damn good. Yeah, and There's that's a lot what, of pieces. That's what's crazy is, you know, I was thinking about, you know, when this stuff was coming in about the offense really struggling in the scrimmage, and I was thinking, well, how, how many defenses are they going to face as good as the one that they're facing every sure. single day in well, practice? And, and you go against these guys every day. They're, they're right. veteran guys that have been around, particularly on the defensive right. side of the ball. You kind of know what's coming. It's, it's a tough ask for the offense. Exactly, and so I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, well, you know, Alabama's probably going to have a really good defense. I don't know if it's better than Oklahoma's, Ole Miss, Missouri. Like, some of these schools that are supposed to have these great defenses, I think Oklahoma's right there in the same conversation. So, uh, I agree. I'm not there saying that they're going to be top 10, but I do think that they're going to be really solid, I think, especially on the back end. Um, like, I, I love their linebacker group. I love their secondary. I think they're really deep at those positions. I just still have the questions of, can they be, get after the passer? Can they get after the quarterback? Um, can they create problems without having to you know, have all these different blitzes and, and different packages? So that's the one thing I'm curious about. I think Dominic Williams has helped them a lot, um, you know, just being a guy in the middle that you can rely on and not just have you know, DJ Terry be the guy or a, sure. a freshman in Jaden Jackson who's going to play a lot. Like I think that that helps that rotation. And then that defensive end group, like I said, I really like – I think they've got a, re- a lot of good players, a lot of solid players. Do they have somebody that 
um, is a huge different difference maker. An Eric Stryker, an Oboe off the edge, that s- somebody that can come in and just make a game changing play um, because of how great they are off the edge. I just don't know yeah. if they have that guy. I, I think that they have a lot of potential, right? Like I think PJ and R. Mason Thomas, those guys have huge ceilings, but. Um, you know, a Danny Okoye, who we've heard a lot about in fall camp. Could he make an impact as a true freshman? We'll see. Um, I, I'm just – that's the one spot where I'm a little curious to be like, can do they have a difference maker there? Because I think they have difference makers at all the other levels of the field. It's that up front on the edge. Uh, do they have that? Sure. And if Ethan Downs or somebody like that yeah. can make another step after what we saw him And he's gotten as, better every year. That's right. That's you what know? I was going to say. It's like he – the jumps that he made a year ago – Made made a lot of people look really stupid last if year. If you would have said two years ago he was going to get drafted, I, I wouldn't have believed you. And now I believe he's definitely going to get drafted. He's certainly put himself in that position, hasn't yep. he? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that he's been super productive. Um, you know, Again, he's not the most twitchy guy. Sure. But you know what you're getting down to down. Obviously plays extremely hard, has a great work ethic. Um, you know, He is the guy that you want leading that room. But you'd love for a PJ out of Barraway to just really – take that next step and be a dominant player because he's their best looking guy out there and now he needs to to play like it it certainly seems he's taken those steps here during the offseason obviously getting up to 260 because that's not an easy thing to do he he talked about it and you can see the full interview on suterscoop.com's editorial page just in terms of like it's not an easy ask for these guys. It might sound fun. It's probably to easy just for you and all the time. For you and me, it'd be easy. Yeah, but for these guys, it's not. Especially when you when you talk about the workouts they sure. go through, and then they, you know, to keep it on during fall camp right. is really difficult right. because they're out there every single day in the heat, sweating off a lot of that weight. So, um, and and still going through lifts and stuff like that. So, hopefully, he can keep on most of that weight heading into the season. They have vitamins in their bloodstream. Uh, me and you have THC. So, yes. you know, it's one of those things. All right. Very good. Uh, that's going to do it. We are tentatively scheduled for Brent Vittables on on Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, and so we'll see. Kind of get some of those updates just in terms of the injury stuff yeah. uh, with Oklahoma coming out of the scrimmage. And obviously there were some uh, questions there with, you know, the MRI results of, uh, you know, what actually happened to Jaden Gibson, yep. even though the, I think – I don't want to speak for you, but I think we feel both. We both feel that he's probably going to unfortunately be lost for the uh, 2024 season. But yeah. it'll be good to talk to Brent. There'll be what seven, eight practices in by then, and then uh, we'll catch up with some more players. Hopefully, at the uh, back end of next week, as uh, they move into uh, what should be another interesting uh, weekend next weekend with uh, you know another scrimmage in front of a lot on of, Saturday. Uh, a lot of eyeballs. I think alumni and stuff are going to yep. be invited to that. Not, not you. The football alumni. Football but, alumni. Uh, it should be good to uh, kind of get them back out there and see what that, uh, you know, kind of takes shape. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Ha- everybody, thank you for staying up with us. I know that, uh, you know, you've been, you know, just refreshing the YouTube page all night for this post-practice report. But uh, hopefully it finds you, and hopefully it finds you well. For George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosvich. We'll see you right back here on the SuterScoop.com YouTube page.